Hey everyone, and welcome to the Everything Show number 34. And, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm with, yeah, I got my little notes. And with me today is Daniel. Hey Daniel. Hi. Uh, Matrix Lord. Hello. Uh, Beefhead. Howdy. And Tim. Hello. How's everyone hey, doing? <laughs> I'm good. Okay. So, uh, who watches The uh, Walking Dead? Me. <laughs> okay. Cat. Have you guys uh, seen? Have, who heard, Who has heard about um, uh, Walking Dead being renewed for a fifth season? I heard something. I did. Um, there's this really cool picture that um, they shared with the announcement. And I have it right here. Hopefully this will work. Can you guys see the picture? Yes. Uh, wait, hold on. Yes. Uh, yes, I can see it. Oh, yeah, yeah. I see it. And if you notice, you know, now this is supposed to be for the fifth season. Of course, the governor is in there. So that's really interesting. So does that yeah. mean during the fifth season, is the governor going to, like, still be you know, showing up next season. Possibly. But, uh, having a conspicuous absence is Carol and Herschel's other daughter, you know, the one who always sings. I forget her name. <laughs> so I'm wondering if uh, that was in, like an accident that they released this picture or if this is just like a generic picture, you know, at you know something else. It's just interesting that Carol is not in it. I, I think that's like the big thing. So I'm wondering if she's going to be the big, um, you know, the big shocker. You know, you know how like last season. You know, has, it, has everybody watched Walking Dead, or is anybody like in the process of walking it, uh, of watching it? I'm no. halfway through season one, so <laughs> a bit okay. behind. Okay, so I, mean, I, don't, I don't watch want... it, but on. Please feel free, on. Don't let it stop you. Because there was a, like a major, like, here's a spoiler, but there was a major, major death last season. Um, you know, major that like nobody really saw coming. Uh, and, and this is coming, I, I'm coming from the people who never read the comics. So if you read the comics, that's one thing, but uh, I've never read the comics, so it was like a major shock last season. And I'm wondering if this season, everybody's saying, oh, Herschel, Herschel, Herschel. You know, because he's the obvious choice this season, you know, to, like, be the next one to die. And so far, they haven't had a major uh, death yet, you know, and we're going into uh, episode four uh, this coming week. So, you know, episode four of season three was the big shocker, you know, big shocking death. So I wonder if, you know, something's going to be coming up. Uh, this next episode is, is is the fourth episode of the fourth season going to be like a big shocker. I know? said Carol's dying, Herschel's dying, maybe even Glenn. Yeah, uh, and and that's, and that and that's another thing. You know, I mean, I wonder if you know Glenn is going to die, and then that picture would just. Who's to nothing. say that we could have him turn into a zombie and then get cured? That's always a possibility too. That maybe somebody's metabolism is different. Maybe they don't become a walker when they're bit, and they just don't turn. I mean, there's a lot of different things. I mean, people's genetic genetic makeup is different. So there's a possibility somebody can get bit and not turn. There's a possibility that somebody can get bit and turn into something even different. You know, what's uh, up, Graham? Hello, guys. How are you? How are you? How are you? No, I'm getting bite. Yeah, so I'm just wondering if this season. I mean, because. Basically, the the first and second episode of season four was great. It was really a great, well written, you know, episode. But as far as action goes, it or, or like like oh my god, like stock value, it wasn't as much. You know, I mean, there were some key like, things. You if know. anybody has um, Netflix, you could watch season one, two, and three. Yeah. Well, if you're in the UK, Sky has got them all as well. Oh, that's cool. You know, but I'm wondering, I mean, season four, episode four, you know, so 
I have a feeling it's going to be right after the just a couple of days, you know, after like three days after Halloween. I wonder if something really big is going to happen. Hmm. Yeah, I'm waiting for the governor to just knock down the prison walls with the tank. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm more into it. And also, um, for those of you who have, who have been watching season four, there's a lot of scenes going on where the camera shots looks like it's from the distance, where it always looks like somebody is watching mm. the players. So I'm wondering if the governor is already in the, oh, I think um, in the prison already. The prison. Or if he's not in the prison, I wonder if he sent in like one of his lackeys like Martinez. Yeah. And and Martinez is in the prison or it could be a mole. You could have a mole inside the prison and then, you know, going back and, like, telling them what's going on. Because it just seems like if that happened, like, once, you know, for dramatic effect, yeah, but it seems to be happening an awful lot. Like, it happened, like, quite a few times uh, last week where there was an episode with Carol um, when they were doing the quarantine and, you know, it, two times they showed it where it looked like somebody was watching you know, and then there was another part where, you know, with Rick, where it looks like somebody was like watching. You know, so it's like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> so I have a feeling this, uh, the fourth episode is going to be really, you know, really a big um, event. I think it's a good show. I think um, I'm going to be curious to see how they um, introduce the new cast to the Walking Dead spinoff that they're going to start. Um, hopefully they don't use anybody from our show, you know, like where Daryl won't go on his own. You know, I'd rather him stay with Rick in the game. Well, um, I guess they're not supposed to, though. But from what I understand, it's going to be a totally different group of people. Yeah. Existing in the same time frame as our group that we know. Right. Different part of the world, probably. So. Yeah. So it's going to be, I mean, it's not to say... Hey, if it's not doing good, <laughs> right. it's not to say that they'll have like a run in here and there. But from what I understand, it's going to be a totally different group. So that's going to be interesting. And, cool. and I'm wondering, and I'm wondering if that the the runoff series or the spinoff is supposed to happen in 2015. So I wonder yes, if sir. season I wonder if season five is going to be the last one uh, for no. uh, this episode. Because um, that's going to be a big undertaking for the uh, writers and for the production crew to. I don't know about that. To be doing that, unless, unless they're not going to have as many zombies in the spinoff, and it's going to be more drama. I think it's going to be a separate team. Because because that's that's like a lot of. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, especially last week when you had those thousand zombies or whatever. I mean. That's a big undertaking. Yeah, I think it's going to be a separate team. They're not going to interfere with each other. Like, uh, it's so, not going to so, take away from the creativity of the original. So, is anything uh, going on tonight in in your hometown? Do you, do you hear any mischief going on since it's mischief night? Um, good. Yeah, no, nothing well, man. Apart from maybe a few police helicopters, but you know. <laughs> That's part of the course, living in London. <laughs> <laughs> so, I've got much else. Special, like, really good ones? I What's that? P police copters? No, no, no. They're pretty standard. Yeah, I, I didn't know if uh, anybody's uh, houses uh, routinely get um, toilet papered or eggs thrown at or anything like that. <laughs> Maybe tomorrow, but luckily I'm out of the way a bit, so. Yeah. Well done, Did anybody right. hear um, about the Evil Dead 2 reboot not happening now? What? Yeah, Evil Dead 2 reboot not happening because Sam Raimi is doing Army Darkness 2 and they said it may never happen from them anyway. Oh, they're going to do an Army of Darkness? 2. Oh, cool. Yeah. Well, that's the main thing. Yeah, that's the main thing. Yeah. I love that's Army of Darkness. That's what people want to see, really. Yeah. yeah if the reboot happens, it happens, but Army of Darkness is a priority, man. I would, 
I would yeah. like him Bruce Campbell, though. I'm sorry. I love him. He is brilliant in everything he's in. And I include Zena and Hercules in that, man. I right, include Luke. Bruce. Yeah, cool. Baba Hotep. Yeah. There was never a sequel to that. Oh, oh I love it. That would have been great. Um, just to say one thing, Caroline. Uh, that, that I don't know if you heard that Trick or Treat Two is coming out. Uh, you know, I never even read, uh, watched oh, okay. the first one. Well, now they're saying that it's not going to be just two. There's going to be a three. Oh. So, just to I know Mike is a big fan of Trick or Treat, and he told me to watch it. So. Yeah, I never um, even watched the first one. <laughs> That's Mike's movie club recommendation. You know what I wouldn't yeah. mind? You know what I wouldn't mind being a reboot would be uh, Pumpkinhead. <laughs> Pumpkinhead. Oh man, that wow. took me back. I, I yeah. actually liked Pumpkinhead. They only had um two movies, right? Yeah. Yeah, that was the two. You know, but you know, with t with the technology and the CGI that they have now, uh, they could do a really good job with the special effects for a Pumpkinhead. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, they were good movies, but it was kind of goofy looking. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, the pumpkin head was <laughs> yeah. not, not all that, like, you know, it was you couldn't help but laugh every time you saw them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So is anybody, like, dressing up tomorrow? Um, I don't know. Because I didn't was I didn't think because uh, I thought I was gonna have jury duty tomorrow. Yeah. So now it was canceled for tomorrow, so now I gotta go to work. So I didn't get a costume. So we'll see. I'll probably put some together. <laughs> duty. Well, what? well, definitely no, duty. And I thought it was funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Daniel, we're gonna talk about if it goes. Uh, Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to get home. When I get home tomorrow, I'll put on my evil clown makeup. Ah. If, if right. I if I'm in a mood, it depends on what time I get home and stuff. If you're in a mood, okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Jay said that J. Jonah Jameson's gonna be in the Amazing Spider-Man too. Oh really? Wait a second. If he's gonna be in the Amazing Spider-Man, wait. Okay. Uh, I Daniel just woke up. Yeah. <laughs> so who, who is this? There's a possibility we can go back. Spock dies at the end, by the way. Uh, no. <laughs> so who is this? Who did you say was going to be Spider-Man? I don't know. J. Jonah Jameson, you know, the guy, the newspaper guy from the Daily Bugle, he's going to be in, the, you know, the character. Daily Bugle. That's going to be in. That is, How that they thing's overcrowded. Got... Haven't they said they're going to th show five uh, five minutes of Spider-Man in 3D if you go and see The Hobbit as well? Yeah. Mm -hmm. as, yeah as, I, haven't, I haven't seen the first Hobbit yet, so I, I'm going to have to decide if I want to go see the... Shame on you, Caroline. Shame on you. Hey. Well, you, know, you know the reason why I didn't go see it, right? No. The reason why I didn't go see The Hobbit is because I protested it in my own way because... Oh, come on. No, because... Um, Several animals, people. over over a dozen animals died on set. Oh, really? Yeah, you really? didn't hear about that? No. Yeah, there, there was over a dozen animals died on set, including a pony named Rainbow. And the reason why uh, they died is while the animals were on set, they were being well cared for. But when the animals were not being used, they had them um, off set, and they were in bad conditions. Nobody was watching them, and... You know, they didn't have, like, good um, housing for these animals. And the pony rainbow uh, ended up breaking its back because it was um, with ponies who have to have, like, like flat meadows and stuff. And where they had them, they had them in, like, this, like, outcroppings and stuff like that. And okay. so the this pony rainbow ended up falling and broke its neck, and another pony ended up breaking its leg. And there was, like, numerous sheeps and pigs and stuff like that that ended up dying because they didn't have enough food and water. Oh so God, when I God. found so That's when bad. I found out about this, I protested. That is terrible. Yeah. So I, I don't I mean I want to go see it, but I, I don't want to give them my money. So I I'll, I'll probably have to like go and download it from Pirate I mean, Bay or something like that. 
Who's, who's at fault there, Caroline? The the people the the. Not Peter Jackson. No, not not. I mean, although he should have been aware of it, and if somebody went to him and said, "Hey, this is what's going on," he is in a position where. But you he know what? You know what? When you think about it, they were, you said you stuff they were cared for when they were doing the filming, and then when they're not being filmed, whatever secondary group was taking care of, that's not the the film's fault. Yeah, but you should, the, you should have, the, no. But the way honestly, the way I look at it is they're in a position, especially somebody like Peter Jackson is not. No, like but they him. rent the animals. For that film, and whoever takes care of them when they're not done by the movie, that's not uh, the movie's fault. That's the people, the secondary group. You should, you should fight against that group where they can never take animal care of animals again. Like that. that the, secondary way, the way group. I look at it is, you know, he should have been aware of what's going on, and when he learned about it, he should have like made a statement saying, "Okay, we're going to look into this and make sure that." All animals are cared for properly on set and off set. So, so the only problem I have with that is that's something that the, that shouldn't be his job. That should be like the movie company's job to make a statement uh, as as you know whoever's the head of the movie company that you know this is just what happens and it's not their fault. Maybe that's why they didn't even say it at all. I mean, you know, now did they hire this group or is that the group that always takes care of the animals? See, I don't know. I didn't hear about that. That's the group that's always taking care of the animals, but they probably took care of better care of the animals than the group did. You know, but the so thing is, I wouldn't, I wouldn't protest the Hobbit. I mean, but, but okay. Peter Jackson is in a position where you know, being the person he is and his celebrity, he should come out and say, "Hey, I object to what happened, and I'm really sorry, and I'm going to make sure that I hire the people to make sure that that doesn't happen again." Well. The only thing with that is, you know, you know got I mean, the wait, Hobbit two, Hobbit three. I mean, you really gonna make a statement like that now and cause a whole controversy from well, a the marketing thing is, standpoint? But the thing, but the thing is, this wasn't, this wasn't known after the fact. All this came out while they were still filming. Yeah, but, but look, if, if the animals were mistreated on set, then boycott, you know, the movie. Absolutely, but if a professional company is taking care of these animals and it's not under the supervision of the movie the, the movie company and it's not, you know, they don't rent them like it, like their that's their regular job and they screw up. It's I don't really blame Peter Jackson or the movie company at all because they were treated if they would have treated took care of the animals permanently. They would be treated like kings. I mean, so. But that's like, a, that's like if you reverse it. Like suppose you have like all the extras that are on the set, and they're be being treated well on the set. But then as soon as like nine to five is over and they're done for the day, then they're treated like crap. You know, that's not really fair. You know what I mean? Well, so, no, but the thing was is that the actress went home, the, the the director went home, and and whoever regularly takes care of the animals took care of the animals, so maybe they shouldn't be taking care of animals. Yeah, but like, yeah. But, but my point is once they started real, no, learning that these animals weren't well cared for, you know, you know, because of course they go up the... Go up well, I the doubt way. they'll use that company again. Yeah, I, I, don't, I hope not, but they, they, they show up for work the next day and Peter Jackson says, okay, bring out Rainbow, and they say, oh, he died, you know, I mean, there should have been an investigation and Peter Jackson and his group or whoever he's controlling, you know, like Universal Studios or whoever produced The Hobbit, you know, should have been in a position New where they Light. said, huh? I think it was New York. I, I'm just saying. I mean, given they're an American. I would say, uh, it, because they're an American company, with why they're filming in New Zealand, wouldn't they still have to get the, um, the, the Humane Society sort of stamp of approval for the credits? So well, that's, a, that's another thing that country. stinks because it's also like a legislation. There's also a legislation error because um, the Humane Society is in charge. It's like this loophole which stinks, and and the government and the Humane Society should work to correct this. What happens is when there's animals on set, the Humane Society is there, but there's some kind of loophole that prevents the Humane Society 
from overseeing animals when they're done for the day. You know, but, well, you know, so I think that's, like, that's why they have the disclaimer at the end of the movie that no animals were hurt during the yeah. filming of the movie. Like, if yeah. it happens not during the movie, then they're not responsible. But but it happened. You should find out that group. But it, but it happened. Yeah. It's not like the movie. It's not like the movie was completely done and everybody went home for the day and the animals were brought to wherever. This happened where the animals were on set and then you know when filming was done for the day they went to this other place until they were but needed. But that other again. place and is and like a professional. Involved. That other place um, was yeah, the original but, place. But, but they, but they were hired. They were hired by the movie company to like watch. It would be like it would be like yeah. I, it would be like if I was taking care. If I was doing a movie and I had like a dog, and then filming was done for the day, and instead of ha leaving the dog on set, the dog was placed in this kennel. See, I, my only my only gripe is that the the blame was going towards Peter Jackson and. And uh, new line, but these guys are not being held accountable. These secondary guys, yeah. or maybe the original guys. It's, you know, it's what, the I guys think what I think. What I think. Get him. Get him. No, I was just gonna say. It sounds to me like the the company that hired out the animals was the one that. Yeah. The, 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 the job. Yeah. I mean, yeah, they they hired them out to 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 be used in this movie, and then they didn't take care of them when they were off the set. Uh, okay, it's like it's like say I don't you know have the story, it's like Carolyn. It's like say you have a dog named Lassie, okay, <laughs> and you decide that you want Lassie to be in Peter Jackson's Lassie reboot, okay? So P so you have um because you're the owner, you have your own group that takes care of the dog when you're not around, and they oversee um because it's going to be on the other side of the world or whatever, they oversee giving the dog to Peter Jackson. And when they're done, they take care of the dog. It's that agency that was hired by the original owner. Because the original owner, first of all, if they're animal lovers, they're going to make sure that those animals are taken care of. For. Okay? No, but the way I'm going to rent right out you know, my pet, it's going to be... May, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna make sure. So they should have some type of accountability. Well, the way I, the way I look at it is definitely the people who actually were responsible for physically taking care of the animals. They should be held responsible. Who but also, there? but also, yeah. it should also be like the company in general. Because when you have like a big production, you know, you should have like, you know, the production company who's like overseeing the whole thing. They should have been made aware of it too, and instead of like hiding behind it until it was released, until like somebody, I think it was um, the story was leaked because this person complained, who this person who worked on this farm complained, and this person got fired, and then that person went to the media, and that's how all this was released. Nobody would have known about it if that person wasn't fired, you know, and. Well. So yeah. my, my so my thing is not maybe not Peter Jackson himself, but maybe like the people overseeing everything that's going on and making sure everything is in place. They should have like they should have made sure that hey, are those animals being cared for? Oh yeah, okay, great. And and like maybe have like an inspector go there like once a week. See, you know, and, that, and like, that could have saved and that could have saved lives. There is there is divisions. With really making movies, you have one like you have somebody that's in charge of feeding the actors. Yeah. You have someone yeah, so that's in charge of bringing models on set if they're doing like a, all these beautiful women and guys. Or whatever. Then you got another for stuntmen, stuntmen. Okay, stuff like that. Like I don't think Pete Jackson has anything to do with that, or even knows what goes on. Just like you don't know what food is coming from where. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Just like cool. they have someone that books the hotels that Ian McKellen and all of them stay in when they're not filming, where they're gonna live for the next three months, or or whatever. So, so that, on that, that scale, scale, that's like that's saying, saying okay, okay. Um, you know, a stuntman was a stuntman was hurt, you know, because they weren't properly trained. No, you don't come after Peter Jackson or 
new law, and you come after the agency that was required to fire the stuntman. So the agency yeah, that was required to take care of the animals are the ones that gave them to Peter Jackson. And, and you said it yourself. They were treated like perfectly. You know, but so but, like they don't feel bad. But don't you think Peter Jackson should, once he learned about what was going on, don't you think he should have come out and like made a statement well, what, saying, you know, thing, if, we're going to make sure this issue, doesn't happen again? But if, no, but he didn't do it though. But if it's a legal issue, he can't say anything about it anyway because I'm sure if he was mad enough, he would have somebody sue the crap out of that. Yeah, yeah but, but but if that was a person, if that if that was like a like an extra, supposed to extras were being like housed at a you know at a facility, you know all the extras First and, all, the movies, come and then and then and, and then like and then like maybe the roof caved in uh, on these extras because the the place was a dive, you know then there would have been an investigation because it's human beings. But See, they can't the come out and say this company and this individual did this. Because then it's like slander. Then you start like defamation of character, slander, all kinds of different things, all kinds of legalities. Lion Cinema and Peter Jackson not going to be like, okay, Paul didn't take care of Rainbow today, and that's why Rainbow Road is bad, or whatever. They're not going to do that. They're going to let somebody handle that. But at the end of the day, I say that the blame is not with Peter Jackson or the movie company because they took. Perfect care of the animals. It's the owner, the way to the owner of the animals. Yeah, you know, I mean, I understand what you're saying, but it's just. Caroline, you know. if you have a dog, right, and you're an animal lover, you're going to make sure you know where that dog's going, who's who's taking care of that dog when you're away, who's right. taking care You are going to make sure. You are going to. You won't be able to sleep at night knowing yeah. what happened to that dog. Okay? These other agencies don't give a crap. They own the animal to make money and they don't care. And then something like this happened, and guess what? They don't have animals anymore. Okay? And this is what this is what the, these people don't care. Yeah. I care. You care. Yeah. You don't care. But we have to what what needs to start happening is that accountability. Okay, yeah. let's stop blaming the big guy because they make billions of dollars and movie companies when they're the ones that would take care of the animal better than anybody. So you know what? Of course they can't take care of the animal when the movie's not, you know, whatever, because they would do the right thing. So go after these guys that try to make money with these big companies by having the animals in the first place. And oh. that's the whole thing. Because you know what? I don't want money from Peter Jackson to pay a fine or a new line. I want those degenerate punks that make money off Rainbow that don't care about taking care of them. So you wait and make a big baby company take care of the animal, but you can't take care of the animal. That's well, you know, well, that would have also been like great if like Peter Jackson or somebody came out and said, "Hey, I just heard about this and this is awful," you know, and you know, and try to like bring in the pressure. You and sure stuff he like didn't already? I I never heard anything. Do you, you know, do you know and, if he and, donated and, anything or, or, or anything? I mean, when when this. Yeah, because when this uh, when the story first broke and it was like right before the Hobbit um, went into the movie theaters. Well, you know, do a I, I didn't hear anything about it. Or, yeah, I mean, I'll look it up. Follow up on everything they, show thir uh, th I'll, thirty-five. I'll, I'll, I'll I would look say it up to see if uh, anything else happened because may maybe he did say something, but it did. wasn't released. In fact, you know, while you're talking, I'm gonna look it up. Okay. So you gotta, you gotta, I, I, would, I would say then though, he's opening himself up. And the movie company up to, to blame, you know. Exactly. That's why they're they they probably didn't want to say anything about it. I mean, yeah. and, yeah, and maybe that, that sounds, sounds maybe a lawyer said he can't. I mean, yeah, I understand yeah, what yeah, you're yeah. saying. If I I understand what you're saying, it's just that it's just hard knowing that like animals like died that were in that Suffer, film. Yeah. You know, like everything everything should be done. To ensure the safety of animals used for entertainment, you know what I mean. At least you'll be safe with Tarzan. She's a rifle age smoking cigars. <laughs> mm. I don't know. It's, it's just it's really hard for me because that's the reason why I didn't see the first one. You know, so you know, I mean, but I got to admit that the second one, this. 
I mean, I okay, uh, Caroline, I don't mean to interrupt, but Peter yeah, Jackson did speak out. Okay. okay. Um, and this is coming from November 20th, 2012. Send me the link. Send, send me I, the link. I will. Um, after denying charges that neglect led to 27 animal deaths on the New Zealand set of the Hobbit trilogy, director Peter Jackson took to Facebook Tuesday to bolster his defense in an attempt to disapprove the claims. Jackson cited the positive testimonial of one of of one horse owner whose animal Peter was allegedly uh, mistreated. The following charge was on Peter's website, Horse Lane, uh, Shanghai, was hobbled. His legs were tied together so he couldn't move. Uh, and left him on the ground for three hours. He was too energetic for the rider. Afterwards, the rope burns on his legs were covered with makeup and hair for filming. Jackson answered back on Facebook No evidence of such a practice was found to have occurred at any time. Further, the production contacted the owner of the horse concerns who provided the following statement. I am 100% happy with the return of Shanghai and his condition. In the term that he was uh, leased, he was picked up and returned to me two times. On both occasions, there was not a mark on him and he was healthy and happy. He has shown no signs of ill treatment and would not hesitate uh, to releasing him to the movie again. Um, hold on a second. Now, let me just uh, follow this up. And why won't this work now? Okay. The Facebook, the Facebook response from Jackson and producers also included testimonials from an on-set veterinarian, a local farmer, an actor, Ned uh, Brophy, who plays Nori in the film. Jackson again targeted the animal wranglers who had initiated abuse accusations, saying they were the only handlers whose standard of care fell below the production standards. He also questioned the timing of the accusations with the first installment, uh, with the first, uh, the first installment to Hobbit, set to premiere November 28th. Now this was before it was released. The Hobbit. Uh, in previous reports, the American Humane Association said no animals. Okay, American Humane Association said no animals were harmed during filming, but did add that the complaints point to possible deficiencies in oversight. Uh, one spokesperson, spokesman for the production, did acknowledge that two onset horses' deaths were avoidable. Okay. Um, Let's see what else it says. So that's one article. Now I'm going to send you the link on that. Okay. Okay. And I'm actually going to put it on this chat here so you can see it. Okay. And then you could do a story on it if you want. All right. I don't know if it'll work. Let's see. Where's the chat? I don't like okay. oh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm going to read the second article. Um, let's. I want to get one that's a day after that. That's from the 20th. Um, let's see. Okay. Here's. Uh, wait a minute. Let's see. So I open that one up. I just want to find. Um, Okay, and there's another article, uh, and it's coming from The Guardian, it says, Hobbit animals not mistreated, says Peter Jackson. I, and once again, I just want to note, um, Carolyn, that this was before The Hobbit was released. Okay. Before. Um, so if he was looking to save his money from making money or any controversy, obviously he mentioned it before. It was released, and he let everyone know it. So, uh, let's see what else we have here. The producers of the Hobbit take the welfare of all animals very seriously, and have always pursued the highest standard of care for animals in their charge. 
He wrote, any incidents that occurred that were brought to their attention as regards to the cure were immediately investigated and appropriate action taken. These include hundreds of thousands of dollars that were spent on upgrading housing and stable facilities in early 2011. Um, the producers completely reject the accusations of 27 animals died. Um, over 55% of all shots using animals in the Hobbit are in fact computer generated. These include horses, ponies, rabbits, hedgehogs, birds, deer, elk, mice, wild horse, and wolves. The American Humane Association was on hand to monitor all use of animals by the production. No animals died or harmed on set during filming. Alright, so we also have uh, yeah, Kathy Gilmero. I know the animals didn't die while filming, but it was like... Peter, awesome. senior vice president of laboratory investigation, said whistleblowers on the Hobbit contacted the organization after it had taken an active role in exposing on the other film. Um, so that, that's it. They're, they're both yelling at each other. Um, but Peter Jackson did make a comment. I just want to put that out. Oh, okay. Whether who's guilty or not remains to be seen, but, you know... You know he said that they spent tons of money to even have better stables for them. So. Yeah, so that's why I didn't see the first one because when uh, everything came out, you know, I was like, you know, that's why I never saw the first one. And actually, from what I understand, the first one wasn't all that great anyway. I like it, <laughs> Caroline. You should go see it now. Mind I mean, you, this is the. Okay, wait. I mean, the, mind second, you. The, second, the second one looks better. Wait, wait. Mind you. I am mad at them because they had the first person to ever try to ding my channel by just mentioning the release date of The Hobbit, which I had to take down. So, and every time I mention them, I had to use a rhyme, which I don't care now. But. I mean, you would think that they would like that, though. It's like, hey, it's coming no, out. No, not for me. <laughs> Alright, well thanks for that link. I'll have to follow up to see if there anything else is going on with it. And just so you know, you better keep keep fighting for animal rights because oh. you are you are awesome. <laughs> if I, I ever hit the if I ever hit the lotto, all I would do is be sitting at home with my cats like writing away. <laughs> I definitely want you to be in charge of taking care of animals because you are very caring and considerate and you're awesome. Oh thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Anybody anybody want to say anything else? Well, it sounds to me like that it was uh, just somebody trying to go after money. Yeah. Mm. I think so. It's possible. Well, like yeah, it's funny how my, my movie makes a billion dollars and all of a sudden nonsense occurs. And they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Meanwhile, it's not even proven. And you got organizations that say it didn't happen. So. Well, like Washington. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel, you're falling asleep. You're watching no. TV. Oh, no, 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 Daniel, no. No dragons right. will be harmed in this new film. Wiki, wiki. No, no, no Daniels will be harmed in this case. Ha ho. Graham, man, I don't know how you got over that earring. Because I got to tell you. Hey, I, how are you doing? I am in uh, massive uh, freaking uh, agony. You're in agony, money. Oh, man. Oh. Uh, I was really sick yesterday. If I woke um I ended up I shouldn't even go on to work yesterday. I woke up and I felt like crap and I forced myself to go in and then I left like two hours later <laughs> and I just sinuses and oh, allergies. And it's like th this year I'm getting my ass kicked with my allergies. It's like Ugh. awful. I know. Today was just crazy. I mean I found out that there was a bus that was overturned with young children. Oh man! In Staten oh, Island, um, I didn't really. I gotta watch. I'm gonna watch the news until I get off here and look and see if any, any kids were hurt. But that's just crazy. Oh, that's, that's awful. Horrible. I know. And then, and then today, a lot of people were talking about. You know, I, I know this is a sensitive subject, but a year ago. Uh, yeah, it's a sensitive subject for me. Began. Yeah. yeah a year ago, uh, a year ago today, uh, Hurricane Sandy. Mm. Not today, yesterday. 
Oh, was it? Oh, they were talking about it on today too. It was. Believe me when I tell you, it was yesterday. Oh, okay. I, I know, but yeah. um. Yeah, because because that, that was like weird. Uh, and I just said, you know, like I said yesterday, a big uh, F you to Sandy. And every mm. year I'm going to say a big F you to Sandy. And you're going to celebrate. My that dog's name is I'm Sandy. I'm not. <laughs> so, My dog's yeah. name is Sandy. <laughs> I said, I, how, I said, how bad were you affected? Uh, I still didn't recover. Because unless I get my car back, I'm not recovered as far as I'm concerned. So. That's I lost your car. Well, amongst other things, but yeah. Uh, so that destroyed my whole. That was like a big part of my world because that took me everywhere, took me to jobs. You know, I was district manager. Then I wasn't because I didn't have a car to get there. Store was destroyed that I worked at. Uh, you know. Couple, actually, one store was destroyed, another one was damaged, and the payroll was cut. I had to rebuild it, but the payroll just wasn't there. I couldn't do my regular routines because now, instead of getting someplace 10, 15 minutes, I had to take buses and transfers and warm my body out. So it was just a mess. And, wow. you know, it just was the worst year. I, I mean, I got good things that came from it. But it was the worst year I feel that I've ever experienced. Yeah, yeah. I, w I was right really there. lucky. Like, right there, right. worse. Um, yeah, Sandy Carter announced I died. Oh. <laughs> that was that I had. That I, I didn't even have an hour to tell him I did it. And then actually, one of my friends, uh, Roxo Genesis, uh, had contacted him saying, "No, he's alright." And then I did a podcast, but. Um, yeah. yeah, I was I was lucky, but like East Haven, which is I actually filmed it. Yeah, the storm it was funny. Uh, you know, because we didn't had no idea when we were filming it how bad it was going to be. Because I was really lucky, because I live I live in Guilford, then there's Bramford, and then there's like I always get this confused because then there's the East and West Haven, and then New Haven. You know, yeah. and I I almost want to say it's like. East Haven comes next, but so I always get East Haven and West Haven confused, but East Haven uh, got totally destroyed. Yeah, I mean, there's a whole strip of East Haven that got before, totally destroyed. Before, before Sandy hit, I was doing books. I was doing books. You know, I had, I had once Sandy hit, uh, there was not one book that was made since. You know, not published, not anything. I mean, one was in motion and was released right after Sandy because it was already almost done. Mm -hmm. But since then, it's times have been hard. But you and had that book signing. Trying to get back to the way it was. Yeah, I did, but it's like you're trying to rebuild from what you used to have. Like, I used to have orders and book signings, and, you know, thing, it's like trying to start all over again. Yeah. You know, plus, without being promoted, because everybody has no money because of Sandy, and, you know, yeah. versus... You're broke. You can't promote it. Then it's just gonna sit there. So now you have to build it up again. You know, newspaper articles. You know, which I'm trying to do now. I'm trying to build up again. My book brands. Um, you know, I'm still gonna do another Barnes and Noble sign. But you know, I gotta get back into do my old thing. You know, it can't. Things can't change because of that terrible disaster. I gotta get back to what it used to be even better. So I was gonna say it's it's so un. It's so unusual that you guys get the got this on the on the East Coast because I live in the Gulf of Mexico and we sweated out for six months down here just waiting, you know, especially right. about ten years ago uh, when it was yes. really bad. And uh, it's just it's really it's really strange that you guys got it in New York. It was a freak, of all places. freak storm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we we tend to get it like uh, it's basically every ten years or so the East Coast gets slammed, you know, like. No, the but this time. was like a once in a century yeah. storm type of thing. Yeah, because it's a, it's Guilford, Guilford, Madison, uh, Guilford, New York, and New Jersey. You know, we'll get because then before Hurricane Sandy, it was like what uh, Hurricane Gloria, you know, but that was mm. like that was like over ten twenty years ago. Mm. Well, yeah. you remember back in like ninety eight, ninety nine, Florida was getting one every week. I mean, it was it was crazy. You know, and it was a beautiful day yesterday. Beautiful day. Yeah, I wasn't feeling good, but it was a beautiful. Day. 
Yeah, I came home and like ended up like sleeping with my cat. So. <laughs> nice. nice. All right, I think we're gonna wrap this up, right? Mm. Well, hey, uh, are we gonna like meet up uh, tomorrow? Do you have some Batman after, news as well? Uh, after Halloween. Yeah, you got Batman Batman news? News? yeah, didn't you say you had some Batman news, Joe? Or something? Uh, I think I did actually. Let's see. I don't know where it is now. Hold on a second. I know you said PS4 and Xbox One, wasn't it? Oh, well, well, yeah, I was going to do it tonight, though. Oh, yeah, oh and Graham, I was going to play, gonna play your, it first. Graham, how's yeah. your PlayStation 3 going? <laughs> yeah, I got one on the cheap, guys, and uh, Batman Arkham Origins, fantastic game, go buy it. <laughs> you have the Robin game, too? That's my weekend, that will be. Yeah. 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 Alright, so everybody go play the video games and come back with you. <laughs> Daniel. What? This just wasn't your cast, was it? What are you talking about? Oh. You're not happy at all, are you? <laughs> no. You're just miserable, no. aren't you? You're no. very angry, aren't you? Oh, we, by the way, I saw a Toy Story of Terror. Okay, go ahead. That, that, it sucked, man. It really sucked. I mean, it started out good, but it sucked. Whoa, what, what, whoa, what? whoa, whoa, what? Toy Story of Terror. Oh, oh Toy Story. Oh, right, okay. Toy Story of Terror? <laughs> So generic, man. Back in the '90s, oh my God! No, they had great Halloween specials back then. Now it's so, ugh, lazy. <laughs> wow. You know what I mean? Now it's all special effects and no, you know. Well, Buzz Lightyear became Buzz Light Scare. No, it wasn't really good. No. Is a snake in your boots? No. Somebody <laughs> poisoned the water hole. <laughs> yeah. What did they spoof? Psycho? Huh? What movies, what movies did they spoof? I heard they spoofed Psycho and a few other movies. Uh, yeah, yeah, they spoofed Psycho. That's interesting. That's about, that's like the first one. I'm not sure what, what others they All right. Basically, have you seen it? No. That's oh. why he's asking you. Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Boring, no? <laughs> Whatever, well, it anyways. All right. Go ahead. Say We're the Star Trek. For you, man. We feel your pain. Oh. Yeah, Say well, the Star well, Trek. Well. Go ahead. I know you've been dying to talk about Star Trek. Yeah. Uh, hey, did you know that, like, okay. Like, okay, originally, Gene Roddenberry wanted to set... Next Generation 150 years after the original, instead of 78, and he wanted to, okay, one of the, the concepts was he wanted to, to make it on the Enterprise G. Did you hear that? I heard certain, I mean, that, that but that doesn't really... And that, that would, and that, and that, that would change, that would change oh. fans how... Yeah, if it's called, instead of D, it's called G, and yeah. Picard in 150 years in the future. Okay. And it, that's, 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 like, not... But, but to, you know, it would be the same thing. It would just be, you know... Yeah, yeah I know. Like, it would have still been the same stories. Yeah, it would have just been a different start. Like. Just change the year, yeah. That's nothing. Yeah, but it would stick, you know, because you got to wait until the technology gets better, right? That's what I would do for, like, G, you know? Uh, <laughs> Scott Bakula, all forgiven. Oh my! Hey, what's that with Scott Bakula? You don't like Archer? No, I never, I never said that, mate. No, I was Dr. Sam Beckett stepped into the quantum yeah, lift accelerator yeah, yeah. and vanished. He woke to find himself trapped in the past, facing mirror images not his own, uh, pursued by the unknown force of peace. His only guide in this journey was out, being from his own time. That Z Z Ziggy said you need to end this cast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, oh Daniel. boy. Oh, also. Daniel. Here. Daniel. Yeah. Mock Joe Ichu. What's that mean? Means bye, everybody. Take care. Uh, <laughs> <laughs>